Well, good morning there, Ben and Fishing fans and ice fishing freaks. We got 11 degrees this morning. We have a uh, good barometric pressure, I think, which I'm gonna confirm here in a second. I don't know where my, my thing went to. Anyways, we're looking for a spot on the spot and we're gonna go try to find it right now. Got him. Got him, got him, got him, guys. Got him on camera, too. It's not recording, though. But there's more than one. Pull my transducer cable. Yes! Finally, a Laker, guys. Finally! Four hours in, not even 18 inches, maybe. It's actually worth staying now. Put them back. Come on, fishy, fishy, fishy. violent. Oh, I missed him. Come on, eat it. Come on, eat it. Oh, you guys see that? They spit that out so flipping fast. He's still down there. Got him. Got him, got him, got him. He's not very big, but... It's also tangled in my other line. Stop, 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 stop. Duh. Just a little s squeaker, guys. Just a little one. But still a laker nonetheless. My line is all jacked, of course. And I think I just, I just cut off my rattle trap. And you know what, I'm gonna see if I can jig down there and get my uh, rattle trap somehow. Might have to tie on another rattle trap to get that rattle trap. Got it. All right, I haven't seen a fish in a while, guys. 
I'm gonna pound this on bottom for like another 10 minutes and then I'm gonna go bounce around a little bit. When they do come in, they come in hot, but they're not just, they're not coming in. Well guys, welcome back to the shack. I'm on plan C right now. Uh, plan A was a sight fish, plan B was to bounce around, and plan C was to come back and set up on like kind of a little mud flat um, and 27 foot of water and it kind of like dips down and goes out um, to my right and I have rocks, rocks to my right and a flat to my left basically as I'm, I'm fishing shore. I am on Great East Lake, I'll tell you the lake. Um, it's my first time here and I was given a couple of spots so I'm not going to disclose where I am. But let's go through all my tackle, kind of what I'm using and uh, how I'm using it. So, what I am catching Lakers on today so far, as you've seen the rest of the video, I am using a Wild Series Shakespeare Ice Rod. And this is the uh, 30 inch medium heavy. So they're a six to 10 pound line. And the uh, actual part number is SWSICE30. MH, which is like their 30 MH. I'm using 10 pound ice line and a ICX carbon PC fun or PC fun uh, inline reel. And then I'm using a, that's not good. Uh, I'm using a six pound fluorocarbon leader that's probably about 12 feet long. To, to stay consistent with my leader length, I just do like one arm's length and two arm's length. Um, 12 feet seems to be okay with most of the places I fish. And then I'm using a hand tied, basically marabou style jig. Uh, kind of looks like a bully bugger. It's got a glow in the dark head that I powder coated myself. Hopefully you guys can see that. And it's a, uh, basically a Kitek ball head, uh, that's tungsten. So it's really heavy. It's got a big hook gap. I will show you right now the other, uh, other thing that I used here in a second before I forget. The other thing that you guys have seen me use religiously is a Menards or Maynards fat so grub. And this is the size four tungsten night glow. And this is a jawbone paddle tail. And I've actually dyed this with chartreuse green uh, spike it. So this is normally pearl white, basically. Normally pearl white, I usually tie that on and not that rod right there, but I wanted to tie my own little fly. And if you want one of those uh, like marabou jig heads, it did work today. Um, let me know. I can tie some up for you. Just uh, send me a, a DM via YouTube or Instagram or Facebook, one of those social media things. Uh, I'm using the Hummingbird Helix. Uh, this is the size, the 10. And let me take you off the tripod for that. So that's the Hummingbird Helix 10. So that allows me to see fish coming in um, wider than the Humming, uh, the Aquaview HD 7i Pro is doing so that's gonna be hard to focus on that screen but uh since it's so bright that's what i'm using to basically get the hook sets because they are flying in 100 miles an hour and hammering it uh, i've only yeah they're just flying in really fast and i've hooked one missed one and hooked a couple other ones got the mr buddy heater and i'm in the eskimo 949 i got the gopro they are facing me of course and uh while we're at it while we're talking about gear and stuff um i use cigar Blue Label Fluorocarbon Leader. Uh, you probably don't have to with some of the Lakers. This is a, a pretty pretty clear lake, so is Winnie. Um, I use a polymer knot for almost, actually all of my knots. And then I use a double uni knot for my braid to my leader um, all the time. And it's the only knot that I trust. And then I tie the polymer knot to the, to the hook. It's a, it's, a harder knot with these smaller hooks, but it is a knot that you can tie really crappy and it'll be really still strong. So that's one of the reasons I use it. Um, and it's got like 98% breaking strength because the line is actually doubled through the eyelet. So, um, hope you guys watch and enjoy the rest of the video and let's catch some Lakers, hopefully on camera. And make sure you wet your knots. And I haven't seen any fish here in a little while. So I'm gonna probably not pack up completely. I'm gonna leave my shack and stuff here and I'm gonna go venture around on some deeper spots. Oh, there's a fish down there. Oh, there's a fish down there right now. Of course, as soon as I say something. Got 
Got him. Oh, he popped off. That was epic. These fish are coming in like one or two at a time. I think I'm uh, wussing out in the hook sets. It's been a long day, guys. Like, really long day. And just to let you know, this is my fourth time out for Lakers. Um, first time actually hooking and catching them. So, I am human. I don't, I don't produce the days that I don't catch fish. Or at least I try not to. But it's been a struggle. Super struggle. Just as I was saying, I was going to move. Fish come in. Always happens. And uh, to stay hydrated, I drink uh, body armor stuff and granola bars. And as always, I'll leave the link for all, everything that I use below. I know you guys love to to buy stuff. It's just it's just an ice fisherman thing, I guess. One of the best parts about ice fishermen, ice fishing, is the gear. Got to have gear to stay comfortable and warm. We'll give this ten more minutes, and then we'll bounce. All right, let's go bounce, bounce, bounce around. I got one on me. Come on, hit it. You silly goose. Go check somewhere else. I had one chase here. And so the ice just started getting really loud. And sometimes that means the fish is just gonna shut off from my personal opinion. Let me know in the comments if you found fish shut off when they, uh, when the ice starts singing like that. Like starts to get like a little puckery on uh, how loud it is and how often it cracks underneath your feet. Like that one, that one was eerily close. I know it's making ice, it's 21 degrees out, it's plenty. Funny, cold enough. See if we can't lure in one or two more lake trout before I gotta go. All right, guys, the ice is super loud and I haven't seen any fish in at least a half an hour, probably even more than that. So thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna get at it again tomorrow, probably a different lake, try to figure out that lake as well and try to catch as many lakers in the state of New Hampshire as possible. So. Make sure you guys subscribe, like, thumbs up, hit the bell notification, leave a comment below. That's like the biggest thing. Leave a comment. Um, let me know what you guys think about like if loud ice actually makes a difference because I think it does. The bite shuts right off for me, at least. And I fish a bunch. So thanks for watching.